Cornelius, are you going to the forest again? You've changed recently. I thought you would have learned to be responsible, but you are still immature. No matter how fascinating that girl in the forest is, remember, you are a prince. Be reasonable, and stop acting like a fool. Your Majesty, the prince merely wishes to sow his wild oats while he retains his youth. Stay out of this, you court jester. Calling the royal sorcerer a fool is quite harsh. Father, as I have said, tis no mere game or jape. My feelings are genuine. I told you what happened to your uncle. Do you recall? Are you saying you wish to commit the same mistake? My brother loved a common girl from the village and was disowned by the king. After suffering that humiliation and fleeing the country, he fell ill. Father, this is different. The woman I love is no low-class commoner. I do not believe she is unfit for royalty. A kingdomless princess. What did she expect of you when you first met? Father, please stop insulting her. You may be my father, but I will not hear her impugned. Cornelius, I know of another princess. More beautiful, more honorable, wealthier. Let your princess of the forest know my feelings. Regardless of what you say, my mind is made up. If you do not approve, I shall abdicate my heritage. Cornelius, wait! Your Majesty, the Prince will eventually come to his senses. Perhaps we ought to leave him be for now. Devoid of life here. If the stories of the Netherworld are true, then this is surely it. Hmm. I have to find my way back. Back home to Titania. I must return to the Princess. Hold! Huh? Your scent. Are you not Titanian royalty? Aye, so I am. I am Prince Cornelius. When I woke up, I was like this. Cornelius, I cannot see what I know. Yes, surely, tis you. This fearful voice that speaks to me from the darkness. Who are you? Even if I told you, you would not believe me. Do not approach me. My flesh is merely a banquet for maggots and other filth. If you saw my body, your very soul would tremble and your blood freeze. <gasps> Take that. You shall find it useful. As Prince of Titania, tis your responsibility. That sword may eventually make my identity known. What do you want of me? Do you know what has happened to me? 
Go now. If you do not wish misfortune to haunt you forever, aim for your home, Titania. Your destiny awaits there. Wait! Please, go. Let me rest. He's gone. <laughs> Tis a dream. An illusion. I'm still asleep in bed. Please let it be a dream. Let me wake from this nightmare and be greeted by the sun's warming rays. But I have no choice. I must continue. I must speak with you. It is an urgent matter. Please wait for me at our usual spot. I would like to finally shake the indecisiveness I have held for so long. My love, I shall speed towards you, quick as the wind. Prince Cornelius. I sense signs of life in this land, ruled by carnage and destruction. Be this a trick, can I hope? Alas, I have naught to lose. All I feel now is resentment and hatred. I have lost any compassion I once had. You! Walking skeleton! Stop right there! Who are you? I do not remember names. Who are you? Aimlessly roaming this land? What purpose do you have? Spirits and goblins shall find you and tear your tender flesh to ribbons. What do you suggest I do? You. Do you wish to leave here? In order to do so, tis necessary to receive permission from the Queen. Let me guide you to her. But in compensation for my services, I ask you to take me with you when you leave. Agreed? How greedy of you. I cannot promise your safety. Now come, and be quiet. Or else, they will gather. What are you doing? Stay close to the candle. Without light, you shall not be able to see the ghosts. an odd blade. It is frighteningly sharp. It must be a magic sword. Indeed oh. it is. A sword made from the jewels selfishly stolen from here by the dwarves. Sinful bandits were blundered into the netherworld while alive. Ask yourself how you came to hold that sword. If you wish for the Queen's compassion, be a dear and hand it over to me. I will give you a peaceful death. You are the Queen of the Netherworld. I am the Prince of Titania. I do not know why I am here. I would like you to return me to the living world. Once you enter this land, you cannot be allowed to leave. Whoever you are is irrelevant. Your careless existence makes you want to leave. This is the land of the dead. Once you taste death, you will appreciate it. Fine. Go if you wish. Even if you leave here, you will enter the Demon Lord's domain. The Valkyrie that serve that man are always searching for trespassers. They will capture you. You may wail in futility, but I must inform you, those who are placed in the netherworld while alive 
are sinners facing my judgment. Such people never find peace, even after death. They are destined to be torn apart by ghosts and shall forever wander the land. You will join them. But I was not sent here. I have not sinned or committed any crime. I merely woke up and found myself here. Queen of the Netherworld, I shall go. Allow me to prove to you that this is some mistake. Your short life is a dream. Death shall awaken you. Your sword has prolonged it. Your soul shall never rest. The Puka shall stay afloat with a candle and light the way across the desolation. Prepare yourself. So I have escaped the netherworld. But as the Queen had warned, I soon became a prisoner of the Demon Lord. Valkyrie are causing a commotion over something so ludicrous. Is this the sad Puka who calls upon the Demon Lord who is feared by all? Puka? I am the Prince of Titania, Cornelius. Ruler of the Northern Realm. I have no intention of causing any damage or harm to your country. I only request permission to travel across your land. I cannot believe the story of a sinner who managed to escape the netherworld. I have committed no sins. So you say. But that sword you carry, I remember it well. It is a special sword our country gave to the previous king of Titania. Hm. You don't seem to be lying. But if you are a prince and have not sinned, Show me your bravery to prove it. Hmm... Let's see... Bring back the horn our most ferocious warrior uses as a flagon. If you should be successful, I shall believe your story. I shall comply. I shall prove myself. Let me return your sword. Are you really going to go? Lord Brigan is known to dislike Pukas. Those outside of the castle who have heard the King's orders shall attack you. Father often asks people to perform tasks that he knows are impossible. Thank you for your concern. But I am Prince of Titania. I shall succeed with honor. Can't you see that women are far more useful off the battlefield? Lord Brigand! We are in danger! Silence! What do you want? Ah! You must be Lord Brigand. Although I take this form, I am Prince Cornelius of Titania. I have come here today to borrow that horn for a just cause. I don't know what this is about, but you're an irritant, Puka. You want this horn? I'll trade your skin for it. Yeah, but with so little fur, I won't be able to do much with it. No, Prince of Titania, I praise your bravery, 
and welcome you as a guest of our kingdom. The Netherworld's Queen? She called me that as well. I would like to ask you, why do you call me Puka? Those like yourself, who have been cursed into the form of beasts, are known as Pukas. It is a powerful curse. Not even I, knower of thousands of magics, can break it. Hmm. If someone's trying to trap me, I must stop them. Your Majesty, tis my wish to return to my homeland as soon as possible. Do as you wish. Gwendolyn, escort the Prince to Ragnanovel's border. As you wish. I appreciate your help, King Odin. My apologies for my behavior. I was unaware of your impressive skills. No. Thank you for your hospitality. It seems like so long ago since I was in my own land. I can now finally return to my country, Titania. I managed to sneak in, but how will I be able to speak with my father? Someone's coming. I'll hide behind a pillar. That little fiend. He plans to renege on our deal. That's me! What's going on? I suppose I will have to be harsh if it comes to that. Otherwise, we deceive the Prince for nothing. So he's behind all this. I shall cut him down! Cornelius! <laughs> Here you are, Cornelius. Have you reached a decision? Yes, of course, Father. As you asked, I will break up with the girl from the forest. What? Very good. Now, go and tell her before you change your mind. Out of political expedience, I have been considering a marriage between you and King Odin's daughter. As you wish, Father. Pardon my impoliteness, but I would like to ask you something in return. What is it? The royal family's secret power. No such thing exists. Go on, leave. Stop wasting time. <laughs> now, how did he find out about our secret power? Father! Who, who are you? Please listen to me. I am your son, Cornelius. The true prince of Titania. That man was an imposter. Are you some sort of jester? Do not ridicule me, beast. I have changed since we last spoke. I said I would abdicate my position. How do you know that? I am your true son. Father, you must believe me! No, you can't be. What are you saying? What? Wait! How did you get that sword? It was given to me. A terrifying voice in the Netherworld told me that it belongs to Titanian royalty. I would never mistake that blood-smeared sword. In the Netherworld? Oh, no, it can't be! Guards! Guards! Take that cursed sword and get it away from me! Father, what is wrong? You lie, whoever you are! Father, please! I swear by the heavens that I am Cornelius! Ask me anything about myself, I'll prove it! I can answer any question! Throw him out! Now! Immediately! Father!
shameful. I'm so alone. To be treated so by my own father. Is it useless to fight back, as the Queen of the Netherworld said? <sighs> no, I cannot give in. I love the princess too much to let that happen. That imposter said that he was on his way to see Princess Velvet. He must be in Elrit Forest. I used to run along this same path to meet her back then. And now this. There he is! Ah! You're late. I have been waiting for you. Who are you? Are you saying that you knew I was going to return to Titania? You must be the one who turned me into this. What is it that you want? I cannot simply tell you. My sword and mind are sharp. I will force you to tell me. Can you do that now? It's me, Prince. Velvet. What's wrong? Your beloved is right here. Why not recite a poem to me? Should I rock you to sleep? Princess, what's happening? I suppose being madly in love clouds one's judgment. But when you awaken, you realize that life is cruel. No, tis a lie! You aren't her! Privileged and naive morons like yourself make me furious. You should be killed. While you are still blinded by love. Shut up! You cannot be her! Such a terrible sword. Who are you? You're obviously not Velvet. I am Ingwe. I am Velvet's twin brother. A brother? Yes, I suppose I can see a resemblance. Why did you curse me? Why was I in the Netherworld? Answer me! The Netherworld? I know nothing about that. But yes. It was I who cast the Puka's curse on you. How could I give my darling sister to you? There's no way to resume your human shape. Forget about Velvet. You two cannot be together. You! Kill me if you wish. But only if you can hold her with arms covered in her brother's blood. Ingwei! Where are you? Velvet approaches. What will you do, Cornelius? <laughs> Are you going to let us see you like this? Oh, Velvet. I won't forget this, Ingwei. <gasps> Ingwei! What happened? You're hurt! Tis nothing, worry not. What are you doing, hiding from me? You're acting very suspiciously, Ingwe. Look who's talking. You've been meeting with that oaf in secret. He is no oaf. Cornelius is a gentleman. He hasn't come to see you lately, has he? Forget him. He's just another man. I'm sure he has a reason. Give me back my chain. Please don't take it without asking. I don't think you should be flailing it around. Just learn to live peacefully and quietly. You know very well that we will never live in peace. I have certain obligations. Prince! 
Am I hearing things? Someone called me Prince. But alas, I am no prince. I am but a beast. I am Urza, the court magician. I am a sorcerer. I recognize the spell that has been put on you. Spells, spells, spells. All you spellcasters should be burned at the stake. Please be rational, Prince. Tis my wish to help you, but my powers alone are insufficient to the task. The King pays no attention to my words. What do you want from me? If you care so much, resign. I have no response to your harsh words. But I have an ingenious plan I thought I could share with you. Prince, do you know of Hindle, the dragon that lives atop the snow-capped mountain? Hindle? I have heard the name. They say he knows all and can see the future. A dragon that wise should know something about your curse. But to ask a dragon is a daunting task. Just meeting one is frightening. Please, forget my rambling. I should not have mentioned it. No. Let's go. Any hope is better than none. Even in the worst case, my hollow and empty life will come to an end. Oh, all-knowing dragon! King of mind, feared by all! I ask you, Hindle! Reveal yourself to me! And answer my question! You will never find him, little Hindle Seeker! Search the corners of the world and you will still fail to meet him! A dragon? You are not Hindle? My friend was clever, but also gullible. He ignored our warning about dealing with humans, and met with an ignoble death. A dragon's scales can resist a thousand ordinary swords. But a sword made of jewels and crafted by the dwarves is another story. It pierced Hindle's chest and gave him the ultimate disgrace of death. This sword was given to me in the netherworld. I know nothing of Hindle's death. I am here to ask you which path my cursed soul should take. Silence, Dragon Slayer! Why do you hate us so? Snatching Belial's soul! Stealing eggs! Hindle! The sight of the nefarious sword you hold makes my blood boil with fury! Wait! I know nothing about that! Do not waste your breath pleading with me! I will tell you of your end. The King of Dragons! I, Wagner, will destroy you! The fires of hell shall obliterate you! Pray while you still can! Taking me. You had the chance to kill me with that evil sword, yet you did not take it. It humiliates me to be spared, but I sense your true nature. I cannot forgive those who use these weapons, nor those that create them. But just this once I will respond with compassion. Let me answer your question. So you will tell me about this curse? I believe you have heard about the obliteration of the Demon Lord's enemies. Your 
appearance is due to a curse that circulates in the remains of Valentine. The princess's kingdom. If Ingwe spoke the truth, then this all makes sense. Many survived the cataclysm, but were turned into pukas. I hear the pukas have united and are working on how to break the curse. So I can return to normal? What must I do? I do not know. Look below you. The barren land below was once the capital of Valentine. The fairies now own this territory. It is a reason for war with the Demon Lord. The Pukas live underground. You should ask them directly. Now I owe you nothing, nameless Puka. My name is Cornelius. Thank you, Wagner. Do not be mistaken. My revenge is brewing, and I shall not forgive the one wielding that awful sword. Should we meet again, you should not take me lightly. Be careful. Hmm, how shall I proceed? How can I gain entrance to this town? Hey, there's another one! You there! Please stop! I don't recognize you. You shouldn't be wandering around like this. I am Cornelius of Titania. I seek the Puka village. Well, this is unusual. A Puka from another land. I am Meryl. How did you find this area? I have heard that your people are searching for a way to break the curse. Where did you hear of this? It's been kept a secret. But you are a Puka. If you assist us, I suppose I can help you. Let me help however I can. Can I trust you with a secret no one can know? I swear I will tell nobody. Very well, I shall tell you. No spell can return a puka to human form, except for one thing. That is, the magic coins created in the Kingdom of Valentine. If all the coins are found, one wish may be granted. Of course, our wish will be to break the curse on us. Collecting all the coins? How many coins are there? We have all been trying, but I really don't know. It is an enormous task to collect all the coins minted from an entire country. <gasps> oh no! We can't stand here chatting. There will be a battle soon. The Demon Lord and the Fairies will fight here. Please come with me. Our secret town is up ahead. Wait! It's too dangerous! You should go back. I must be on my way. I should not have told you about the cauldron. It creates pure magic. And the Veneer and the Aesir are fighting a war over it. The princess snuck out onto the battlefield alone in order to stop it. Ah, I'm so nervous. Princess Velvet. Why are you so concerned about Princess Velvet? I can't tell you now. In any case, the Aesir and the Veneer are nearby. Fighting over the crystallization cauldron. Why has the princess gone out at a time like this? 
It is because the late King Valentine has returned to this world. The cauldron is still active, but it is like being asleep. But that man can manipulate the cauldron like he did during the disaster. This disaster? When this land was destroyed and its people turned into pukas? What kind of king wishes for the destruction of his own country? The cauldron ruined Valentine. That nightmare may become reality once again. The only one able to stop King Valentine will be the princess. She knew him. I have a magic sword. Don't worry about me. I'll help save the princess. Oh, Velvet. Even if we meet, you won't be able to recognize me. But I shall protect you, even if you don't know me. Ah! I'm sure you've realized by now that escape is impossible. Now give me back that ring. I promised to protect it. I cannot let anyone have it. This ring... It controls the cauldron. I must stop the cauldron. He is nearby right now. Who are you talking about? The cauldron's controller. The ring's owner. Valentine. He cannot control it again. It will repeat a tragedy. You are making excuses in order to keep the ring to yourself. This is what you get. Princess Velvet! Puka, I beg of you. Please, get the ring. The ring? Protect it. Give it to no one. Listen. Give me my ring. This weapon is a magic bow. It only takes one shot. You hurt the princess. You're acting like a child. I'll let it slide. Go away. Don't take me for a fool. I don't fear you, Kuka. I won't forgive you. She's unconscious. Princess Velvet, are you all right? I see. My granddaughter yet lives. Puka, do not come this way! Take the ring and escape! Oh, that spirit I helped! I must thank you. I managed to escape back to this world without being caught by that pale woman. That crown? So you must be... I am the King of Valentine! The cauldron is my heart. And the Titril, my throne. The ring has been returned to its rightful owner. Grandfather, please think about this. You and your brother escaped the curse. You can't comprehend what it's like. This pain and suffering. Neither can Odin, nor the fairies. Nor all of Titania! They must see hell firsthand. You want the world to end? Take a good look at me. All I want is... Oblivion! Yes, the world's demise. Just like the prophecies, the lid to hell opens. The time has now come. It seems that all the rational thinking fell out of that bony skull of yours. Damn, Puka. Do you think waving some magic sword from Titania around makes you a hero? Watch your mouth. Kneel, fool. I am your king! You were never my king. Ah! You fool. 
Intruding on us? This isn't over, you hear? Princess. Thank you. Thank you, Puka. Princess Velvet, I wanted to see you. Tis me, Cornelius. No, I can't. She can't love me when I'm like this. I can't tell her. Just close your mouth and endure the pain. But for how long? Oh, here you are. <laughs> you jumped out of bed the instant you woke up. How do you feel? I think you should get more rest. The princess, how is she? Princess Velvet brought you back here. Where is she? She's not here right now. She was in a hurry to leave. Something wrong? Meryl! Run! The goblins are invading! Here they come! Hurry! Oh! Ah, he got away! That cowardly ball of fur! Let's take all their coins! There must be some around. Whoa! Hold it, bunny! I gotta cut those ears off! <laughs> no, tis better to skin them and make a nice fur cloak. Ah! Stop! This is Puka territory. Get out, goblins! What are you saying? This is our land! We're citizens of Valentine! We're entitled to this land! Stop talking nonsense. No, it's true! Pukas with evil hearts are turned into goblins. But I don't know why they would act this way. The coins must be given freely in order for the spell to be broken. Stealing the coins won't help. We know that. After all, our king cursed us. But King Valentine ordered us to do this. King Valentine? This isn't our idea! But we can't just let you pukas be the only ones who get to be humans again! But if we toss the coins in the lava in the Fire Kingdom like the King said, it'll glorify your crying faces forever! Wait! Meryl, are you alright? Oh! You can't let them... If we lose the coins, then we will never return to our old selves! You again? You always interfere. Those stupid goblins were all talk. You are a king, are you not? Why would you choose to make your citizens suffer? Those coins are mine to spend as I please. Very well. Let me tell you a story. Long ago, there was once a benevolent king with extraordinary powers. In order to keep his people happy, he put his power into the money, so all shared it. But what happened to him? Instead of thriving, the country was destroyed by a traitor. And instead of being mourned, I was called a mad tyrant who cursed my own country. Didn't you use the cauldron against your own land? It matters not now. Both the king's power and virtuous spirit have been infused into the coins. Once these coins were melted in the lava, 
my power would have returned to me. Those idiotic goblins! No, I shall let this go. I am a forgiving person. I still have hope. There is just one egg. Don't underestimate it. As the prophecies state, this is the egg of the dragon that dooms us all. In the Valentine prophecies, they call this snake, uh, Dragon, Leventhen. A dragon's egg? So Wagner was referring to you when he said that? My fury will burn the world! I will give you all my power! I entrust it all to your fiendish, brutal nature. Now hatch! Leventhen! Show us your strength! Jewels. They suppressed my powers. I could feel them withering away while I was there. Who are you? I am Prince Cornelius of Titania. I see. Edmund's boy. I didn't understand why you carried the mystic sword of Titania. But now, I see why he gave you that patricidal blade. Patricide? I don't think he'd tell you. He killed his own father, King Gallen, and took the crown. My father couldn't do that! My grandfather was killed when the country was attacked by the demon beast. But my father was visibly frightened when he saw this sword in my hands. Huh? That voice that gave me the sword. It knew who I am. No, it can't be. That cannot be my grandfather! King Gallen must have wept in his cell. In addition to killing his own citizens. <laughs> he was slain by his own son. I had thought that after the attack, my father was the kingdom's savior and was given the crown. You say my grandfather was the demon beast? That's absurd! He transformed via a mystic power passed down through the Titanian royal family. In order to fight my own intimidating army, Gallen made a decision. Our military forces were crushed under his feet, and we were scattered. There was no time for anger. The beast continued to rampage through the kingdom for seven days. So my father destroyed the beast in order to save the country. Be grateful for Edmund. If he did not claim to know the mystic power himself, I would have invaded Titania. Your land would have been easy to conquer. So that's why he was stubborn. This rumble is an omen. This is not good. If Onyx, the Inferno King, were to greet us, it would not be a good thing. Wait, where are you going? Into the flames of purgatory. I bid thee farewell until the world dies. <sighs> It's all here. I see. I'm relieved. Cornelius, thank you for everything. I speak on everyone's behalf. I would have been worried if I lost the coins as well. You say you're from Titania? You shouldn't go home for a while. 
Uh, not with the way the town by the castle is. What? Haven't you heard? A dragon has appeared in the castle town. A dragon? A woman has been chosen to be sacrificed to it. The king of Titania is unable to do anything, and the country is in a panic. My father is ruthless. Huh? That's my father and Urza! Please forgive me, Urza. I have done as you asked. Repent for the sacrificed! You were too stubborn to hand over the Book of Transformation. I had no choice but to call my dragon servant. Please return the book. I can't let it happen again. King Galen's suffering was nothing compared to this! Stop. Please. The blood won't go away. Blood from my poor father. Then be relieved. Your pain will soon end. I shall call King Galen back to this land from the netherworld. And then what? You will make him king? As the prophecies state, he will be the great force that causes the world's end. He shall call himself the Beast of Armageddon, and he will rule the world! And with the Ring of Titrell as well, our wishes will come true! Urza, so you were behind this? Well, well, Prince Cornelius. I was surprised to see you returned from the Netherworld, but to see you survive an encounter with the great Wagner is truly surprising. You started all this. Now, if only King Galen is as fortunate as his grandson. The time is near for the return of our Lord and Master, King Galen. Now I finally understand. I see why King Galen gave me this sword. When I met him, I know he asked me, please let me rest. Galen does not wish to repeat his past atrocities. Fate brought me to him, to crush your evil schemes. Nonsense! The king awaits his subjects. No one can stop us! Cornelius, so it is you. Forgive me, I was deceived. We have no time to waste. The Princess of Valentine came looking for you and was captured by the dragon. The dragon is in the sewers. Velvet! Prince, I'm amazed. You've continued to elude all the traps that I've set for you. But this is the end. This is out of your league, Puka. Your pitiful Cornelius. Ingwei, you're still alive. You thought you could kill me for interfering with your plans. But too bad, sorcerer. I will have you keep your promise. Now hand over my share, and give me the mystic power of the Titanian royal family. You stupid little frog! You don't deserve the power! Stay back unless you wish to become like him! Do not forget that I possess the Ring of Titrell. <laughs> Take a closer look. Where could the real one be? What? You filthy scoundrel! You will regret this! Ingwe, please listen to me. Velvet, she... 
She was given to the dragon. So there you have it. She's your twin, isn't she? My loyal servant, Belial the dragon, lies ahead with an offering placed before him. You scheming devil! I cannot speak for others, but if you defy me, I may simply kill the girl right here. If you give me the ring, I will let you go. I see. Huh? Cornelius, I have healed you. Go, rescue Velvet. Heading for the dragon? Don't go anywhere, Urza. I will be your opponent. So, I see you refuse to give me the ring. I'm just in time. Stand back, dragon. Do not touch her. Stay away, puny one. Those who approach will meet my fangs. Urzer has commanded me. Why is a noble dragon serving that foul sorcerer? He controls my heart with magic. I cannot disobey him. If you have the power, then save my tormented soul. I cannot bear it anymore. Hiding in this stinking sewer and attacking innocent humans. If you feel any pity for me, kill me now. He's far too successful. This cannot be good. Please, you can't be dead. Wake up, Belial. You don't have time to die. What's wrong? Obey me! Your words mean nothing. My heart has been pierced, and your spell broken. You impudent beast! Indeed. I have been freed just before I die. Sorcerer, your time is up. Our contract has ended. Wait! My death is near. Let us go together! Father! The Sorcerer has gone to join his dragon in the Netherworld. Titania has been saved. Cornelius. I have no right to be king. I will relinquish my crown and name you the king. The citizens won't allow it. They wouldn't serve a puka. This is not the time to be weak, Father. You must take responsibility for your actions and the chaos you have caused. You never deserved to be king before, but you must live up to your heritage. Extend your heart to the people and show them that you can be just and kind. This is your son's last wish. Please, be a good king. Cornelius, where are you going? To live with other Puka. I have to put aside my feelings for her. Princess Velvet, I should have told you. When we met in the forest, I will love you forever. Yes, it's me, Cornelius. My heart has not changed. 
That is all I have to tell you. My brother Ingwe. He transformed you into a puka. I will forgive him if you wish it. Prince Cornelius, let me stay with you. Don't confuse pity for love. I am no match for you now. It will tear my heart apart, but I will leave your side and let you find another. Tis not pity. You shall regret it. No! Prince Cornelius! Please, look! My arms! They are too small to even hold you! No! You've never held me so strongly. I no longer have a palace. I don't even have a home. If I can be with you, I have no need for shelter. No matter what you appear to be, you are still the same person, Cornelius. My love shall not change. The hopelessness and despair I felt have been replaced with joy and love. I have faith. In time, I will return to my human body. I have lost nothing. Princess Velvet, I swear. I will fill your life with love and happiness.